Assalamu alaikum warahmatullah. So we're coming into the start of February and spring's already knocking on our door and it's time to get more seeds started. So I'm going to show you 10 seeds that I'm planting right now. So you see me messing with my gutters. So I'm guessing you know what's on the, what's on the charts right now. And I'm going to start off by filling this gutter full of compost. You can see the grade of compost that I'm using. I'm using quite a rough grade of compost because these are quite big seeds that I'm going to be sowing. And the seeds that I'm going for are peas. These are a variety called Onward and they're a main crop variety. So I'm just going to pop them in quite dense. I'll just space them out a little bit, but it doesn't really matter because peas like being a little bit overcrowded. Like most legumes, they don't like being transplanted. So with this method, we don't keep them in the gutter. Remember that we don't keep them growing in the gutter as the final destination. But by growing them in this gutter like this, we'll be able to just slide them all out straight into the ground. And this compost is quite wet. So I'm not going to water it. I don't need to water it. And I don't like soaking pea seeds. A lot of people do like soaking pea seeds, but I'm not a fan of it because they can end up rotting. I need to get this greenhouse tidied because it's starting to fill up with stuff quite fast. So far in this greenhouse, I've got loads of broad beans planted. They just had a little peak because they weren't doing much and they're, just, they're sprouting. They're just about to pop their heads up. I've got some peas already planted as well. And I've got a few pots of onions as well. Here's a tub of onions that I started at the start of January in the propagator and I've just moved them outside. What I've done with it, I've just top dressed it with some seeding compost and that'll just help the roots establish and them firm up. In a couple of days, once they get settled in, they'll all stand up nice and straight. A lot of these do are going to need a bit of a water now, but you've got to be careful with the water because it's still quite cold and you're getting a little bit of frost. So you just want to be careful that you're not freezing the plants or freezing the roots. Now in this video, what I'm going to do is I'm going to cover some of the things that you're going to start to sow and some of the things that is really coming up to the end of sowing. Yeah, so these are the first ones on my list of the probably you're coming up to the end of when you can actually sow them and get them to grow and grow to maturity. On the topic of onions, these are more onions. If you're going to grow onions from seed, for me, February is probably a cut off. It's cutting it quite late. I'm quite behind with my onions this year. I'm still, I'm just going to go ahead and sow my last few. And these are a variety called uh, white sweet Spanish. They're a white onion, as you can tell by the name. And they're a, they're, a, they're an eating onion rather than a cooking onion. So good for burgers and sandwiches and stuff like that. So I'm just going to sow a pot of onions into here. For me, it doesn't really matter if you overcrowd them a little bit because we're just going to grow them as bunching onions. So we're not going to separate them as individual plants. We're going to take bunches of onions, so four or five onions in one go and plant them out. And rather than the individual seed tree, okay, the individual seed cells are nicer and easier to transplant roots, but onions are so resilient. Um, this kind of sowing is absolutely fine. Because of the timing and because it's starting to get a little bit warmer, we're still going to have regular frost, so don't, don't be fooled by that. I think it's going to be in a cold greenhouse. It's going to be fine to sow them. They will take a little bit of time to germinate, probably two or three weeks before you get in your onion heads coming up. But if you want to get a jump on the season and you want them to germinate within a week or so, get them in a heated propagator. They don't need extreme amounts of heat. About 15 degrees will be absolutely fine and they'll get going. And another one for my outside sowing is get your carrots in. So if you've got some carrot boxes in the containers like I use that I'm storing my compost in, these kind of containers are absolutely ideal. If you sift the compost, mix it with uh, about 50-50 sharp Santa compost and that'll be perfect for sowing your carrots in. Towards the end of the month, I'm going to direct soak radishes into the ground of the greenhouse and that's just going to give me a chance to get something growing on the ground before I start filling it up and it'll give me a quick harvest. Remember what radishes do, they grow really fast. You wanna, you wanna push them, grow them really fast to get them to harvest within uh, a, six weeks or so. And that'll be perfect timing for me to start to use the ground for other crops as well. Those onions that I sowed outside, those um, white sweet Spanish, I've got another tub here. 
and I'm going to stick these in the propagator and we'll do a little bit of a comparison to see which ones do better and which ones do better in harvest and how fast it takes. So we'll do that little bit of experiment while we're going. So let's look into our magic cupboard of seedlings. Come on. Here we go. So these are some of the seedlings that I sowed at the start of January, some of the chilies, and you can see them coming up really well. So we've got nagas and we've got the aubergines. So these are long purple variety of aubergines and we've got loads of different types of chilies in here. We've got nagas, we've got Carolina reapers, jalokias, we've got ozoka, we've got all sorts. There's loads of, too many to name right now. Let's get back to seed sowing because for me it's getting quite late to sow some of these plants. So let's get sowing some more aubergines because it's, for me it's getting quite late on to sow them. There I sowed purple king variety and now for me here it's time to sow a couple of ones that are really good ones for us. There's one listed Igandia, it's a nice one, it's a purple and white stripy one. We, it's not a massively heavy cropper, but it grows. So we got a few decent plants last year and they, it was a decent crop, but the one that I really like growing and the one that never lets me down, Black Beauty. There's two, two that I really like growing. It's a nice big aubergine, Black Beauty and Moneymaker. We got some really stonkers last year, absolute awesome ones. So they are uh, quite an easy one to get sown. So just get them in on a bit of firm compost, pat them down. The key for these plants is heat. So they do need a good warm temperature. So about 20 degrees, 18, 20 degrees, that sort of range. And they'll germinate within about a week or so. This propagate has been sat empty. And as you know, for us, space is a premium. So we don't like having things sat idle for, for very long. We want to get them germinating really quickly. So that propagate is going to get turned back on today and we'll get some plants kicking again. You see me doing these videos and I show you what I'm doing and the successes that I'm having. And you see that with a lot of social media influencers. Last month I sowed lettuce and the germination for the lettuce was so bad. It was just really bad. I didn't get a single plant germinate. I think it's down to old seed because some of these seeds that I'm using are quite old. So I'm going to go for another sowing of lettuce right now. I would recommend sowing with lettuce sowing little and often and with the leaf or the freely leaf lettuce varieties you can use them as cut and come again so cut them back and let them grow again and same with the sort of rounder lettuces you can just pick the outside leaves and that's what I'm going to go for now it's a it's called uh, it's a round lettuce it's called atricite or atricti or whatever I don't know these latin names I can't do them whatever um yeah I don't really mind about the names so but just salt and pepper style sowings, yeah? Just nice and uh, a nice little sprinkle. You can be more precise, but it's just so tedious. Um, so just firm them down so they get a good soil contact. But the important part with lettuce is they actually benefit from a little bit of light to help germination. All I'm going to do is just give it a light dusting of compost just so I can get some soil contact so it's not very heavy at all. These kind of plants, because space is a premium for us, they're not going to get space in the propagator. They're just going to sit in a warm room. But with lettuces, make sure you're sowing them every month so you're going to get that continuous harvest, okay? You don't want a glut and you don't want to be have a drought either. With the start of February, it's perfect cucumber growing time. So we're going to get some cucumbers growing and I've got a few varieties of cucumbers here. I've got crystal apple, crystal lemon, Armenian yard long and I've got some Bangladeshi kira as well. Now the kira, they're just a bit bigger than a gherkin. They're absolutely beautiful for just eating. Same with the cute crystal apple and the crystal lemon. They're good. You just pick them off ripe ones and just munch them down. Absolutely awesome. Now with the Armenian yard long, they've been really pathetic, you know, for us. They've just not done well for us at all. So, um, yeah, if they don't do well this year, that's it. I'm going to give up on them. But I've just got some seeds knocking about, so I'm just going to germinate a few and see what happens. I'm chitting these seeds on a wet tissue. And a couple of people have asked me, do I chit uh, seeds that I grow? You know, when I'm talking about my tea method, do I chit seeds on, the, on tissues like this? And yes, I do. But I generally go for bigger plants because with smaller plants, I end up crushing them. And just a bit of water in there. You can, you can be a bit smarter than I've been just now and wet the paper towel first. So your seeds don't get washed about. 
but not to worry job's done here it's tempting with this method to you know really overcrowd them but i've got 10 seeds in this plastic tub and i think that's enough just a label on the outside of the pot so i know which side's which and seal the tub, seal the tub that's it really simple that's just going to sit in my propagator now so just on top of where I've got the aubergines planted, I'm just going to leave it as a tub like that in there. It's going to be warm enough in there for them to germinate. Make sure I water all of these plants in. And with them in, being in a propagator, you can't, I don't really mind with the watering. I can go quite heavy. The, the water will evaporate. And that plastic tub is just going to sit on top of there. Now the vent's important, so if you see it getting quite humid in there, open the vent and let some, let some of the steam out. And when you've got a lot of water in that, like I've just put in, then it can get a little bit steamy. So just do let, them out, let the water out or let the air circulate. The last thing you want is when your plants start to germinate, you don't want them to get mouldy and die. We've got some uh, chilli soaking in, in tea. And this tea method is really catching on. A lot of people are finding a lot of benefit from it. Now I've got two things. I've got chilies and I've got peppers. So chilies, these are overkill that Graham gave me. So uh, we're gonna get these sown. So this is the hardest part of it. It's fishing these seeds out. There's my chili seeds in. And that'll be fine. A little bit of compost over the top. With chilies and aubergines, I do like to put a little, probably about a centimeter of compost at least. That just gives the plants enough space to establish themselves. As soon as I get space in the propagator, that's going in, but I'm just gonna keep it in a warm room at the moment and it's, it's gonna take a little bit longer like that, but it will get there. The other thing is sweet peppers. Now is a perfect time. So from now until next month, you've got a good time to sow sweet peppers. They do like a long growing season. So the earlier, the better, but the milder chilies, and the milder peppers, they tend to do okay. Don't go beyond the second week of March with uh, peppers. You do still need a decent growing season. This tea method is really catching on. A lot of people have been getting a lot of benefit from using this tea method. I'll leave a link for how I do the tea method and how my family have taught, done this for generations up here. I've got a lot of positive feedback from a lot of the viewers. Thank you very much for that. And I'm glad you're trying new things and opening yourself up to new methods of growing. There's even a lot of big YouTubers that are now using this method, but just remember one thing, you saw it here first, yeah? Now this is one that is definitely time to start growing, coriander. Coriander is, a per is perfect to start growing now. And the way we do it is we soak it for a few days. Um, and this has been soaking for two days now. Once the seeds have started settling and they've sunk, and taking on, on enough water, we're gonna take them out of the water and we're gonna tie them in a dishcloth. I'll leave a link for probably the best coriander video you're gonna see up here. It is really useful for growing coriander and having successful continuous harvests. We're gonna go for our first sowing of spinach. And again, this is gonna be, I'm not gonna grow these on a propagator. They're just gonna go on a windowsill in my house. You could, if you were, if you're getting decent greenhouse temperatures to try and germinate these in the greenhouse, uh, in a few weeks towards the end of February, I would go for it. But right now, these are still getting germinated in my house. Now it brings me on to my last seed for this video. I'm going all out on this year. I've got loads of varieties that I want to sow. So first one, these tumbling tom uh, tomatoes are absolutely fantastic for hanging baskets. If you do want to grow tomatoes in containers, brilliant for that. Uh, this is a new one, purple calabash. It's one that I've not grown before, but the pictures look absolutely awesome. See, there's a few other varieties of tomatoes people did tell me about. And like purple heartthrob and some other few few varieties but i'd already put my seed order in and i don't want to buy any more right now now i get asked this question quite a lot that um do tomato seeds need soaking or would you recommend soaking tomato seeds with tomatoes absolutely not simply because they're so easy to germinate 
if you give them heat, they'll grow like weeds. Honestly, just give them heat and water and your tomatoes will be absolutely fine. This is a perfect month to sow tomatoes. This is the month that I go all out with my sowing tomatoes. I won't bore you with me planting all the other seeds, but I'll just show you the varieties. So I've got honeybee, that's a yellow tomato. It's, it's a good sweet tomato. It's like a cherry tomato. It's quite good. Gigantimo, that's a big, a big beef steak. We'll get we'll grow them, see how they on how good they get. Outdoor girl, that's another quite a big beef eater tomato. Um what else? Oh, that's another packet of gigantimo. Okay. Sweet Cassidy, that's one that I've never grown before. So that's gonna be an interesting one. Big Daddy, let's see what happens with that. That's another gigant giant tomato. Honeycomb. Now, for those of you that like growing um, sun gold tomatoes, honeycomb is a really nice tomato, actually. It's like sun gold. It's got the same qualities as sun gold in terms of sweetness, in terms of taste, but they're not as prone to splitting. Yeah, so um, it's very similar to sun gold, but they just don't split as much. I have got sun gold as well, so we'll get those sown. Um, Marmande, really nice one, big tomato, but it's not a fantastic cropper, so you'll get a few on a plant rather than loads and loads on a plant, but you will get some good hefty meaty plants. Amish paste, a nice tomato for canning and juicing if you're into that sort of thing. Tigerella, um, a classic heirloom sort of stripy tomato. A sweet million, this is my last tomato on my list, but this is just such an uh, abundant cropper. The tomatoes are absolutely gorgeous, they're a cherry tomato, but they're so, so abundant, you know, on trusses, on top of trusses, that's what you get with these. I grow these, I've, the best plant I've ever had with this is I've had 14 trusses off a single plant. It went up, the, up my greenhouse and bent round the top, 14 trusses, and they were big trusses as well, really good. Yeah, absolutely fantastic. So that brings us to the end of this video. Um, it's going to be an epic seed sowing marathon once I've got off the off recording. But don't forget to hit that like and subscribe for regular updates. If, and if you want to support our channel, why not become a patron? I'll leave it there for this one. Assalamu alaikum warahmatullah.